However, this probably so recently I finally have finished my work, so there may be a period of time that I'm free enough to make animation and tutorial. Uh, in the past, there was a person who asked me this animation, so I'm going to make a tutorial. Just to say that the shade knowledge have been mentioned in the shade motion graphics tutorials, and uh, you can take a look to that by going to the link on the right upper corner of the description. Uh, I very likely won't talk. I very likely won't talk about that specifically in this tutorial. Another thing is that uh, this animation is very simple. The original problem asked was about local transformation, but this is something that I have mentioned in the past. I highly recommend you to take a look to the entire series from part 1 to part 2, uh, along with many other fundamental tutorials. Uh, because although these are rather dumb knowledge probably, um, they are important and another directly mentioned elsewhere probably. Uh, also, this tutorial may be long or short, depends on how far I wish to go. But um, let's see. So the first thing that we need to do is to do a very very basic modeling. I'm going to use the tool and only to change the origin and I'm going to turn on the snapping. And basically just to put the origins to the word center and the selection to cursor. So that if I change the transform, of this cube, it will only go one side, especially on y-axis. And this is uh, kind of nice. And I'm going to turn on the bevel. And because uh, the transform scale is not uniform across um, each three axes, so the bevel looks kind of rather weird, like uh, on one edge it bevels more, and on the other edge it bevels less. This sometimes is not desired, but uh, at some point you cannot really change that very much. But anyway, I'm going to apply the scale so that now the bevel looks kind of nice. Uh, these may be kind of issues if you're changing the scales through animation nodes later. Um, it also actually depends on the way you instance the object, but it, these are not topic today, so I'm not going to mention that explicitly. Uh, in case if we're going to talk about uh, shader motion graphics, I'm going to add a vertex color and let's also add a material. Uh, so let's just add the material. And, uh, I think that's nice. So let's go to the animation node. So the first thing I'm going to do is to distribute the matrices. Um, and I'm going to change the type to a circle because I'm going to instance everything on a circle. Then I'm going to use the regular way to instance the objects, like the objects instancer and objects matrix outputs. So matrices into instances, objects into objects matrices into matrices. So you, I replicate cert, um, the same amounts of the object as our, the matrices of our circles. And now I have enough amount of objects. Each object has individual meshes and the uh, original modifier. Next question is about how to local transform the, our objects so that they align in a correct way or a desired way. So um, as I mentioned in my local transform tutorial, a way that always will work is the matrix math. This node will definitely work all the time for local transformation. It's actually a node designed for local transformation almost. If you want to have a global transformation, then you always use the transform matrix, which means if you would like to rotate these circles in a correct way, then I need to make a rotation matrix and plug it maybe <coughs> y rotate 90 degrees. And this is one way to do that. And for matrix method, it will make uh, always work for local transformation. However, there is also another way, which is offset matrix. Uh, this, is, this is almost an error that I mentioned the last time. So here are several things. Uh, this node will work very well for multiple inputs, firstly, especially if it comes from distributed matrices. But what if I only would like to effect the local transformation of a single object? Then you just hit M panel and to tick off the use matrix list. So you input a single matrix. So this is one way to do that. Um, there's also other options, like you can change the axis of translations and the rotations. 
Um, and I don't think I need to spend the hours to explain what does it mean if you use Blender. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to change everything into local axis and local pivot. And now if I try to rotate that for 90 degree on Z, then it will work in the way I want. I can also change the scale so that they will do the same as I wish. Yes, I think basically this is nice. Um, just to be aware, as I mentioned earlier, that if you change the transform, like the scale through these metrics, it will definitely affect our bevel quality as well. Like uh, some edges might be thicker, some might edge will be thinner. Uh, but since the, in this case it's not very obvious, so I will rather ignore that. But this is one issue that you may potentially think accordingly if you are working with this kind of setup. And I can make it thinner and increase the amounts so you can do whatever you want. So here what you can actually see is uh, both offset metrics and the metrics mask can do the local trans transformation. Uh, but the advantage of offset metrics is it has an automatic fourth that you can work with. And this is especially important if we are going to work that later because we are going to use a fourth to decide which part of our plates need to form such kind of bridge or not. Also, here's another thing I would like to mention. Um, there's a lot of options in the scale, but if you change that, for example, the global axis, it will actually give us a warning. It, it says it may result in invalid object matrices. Um, what I would like to say is sometimes it does not work correctly. So you may need to use that accordingly, or if you really try to use the global axis, then just use the transformation matrix or something like that. So next thing I'm going to do is to take the local transform of the plates to make the bridge. And I'm also again going to use the offset matrix. And here I'm going to put a new object offset matrix upstream. And I'm going to make the scales normal and the rotation normal. I'm not going to affect the scale but only the rotation. Next thing I'm going to do is to take our controller and take the object controller forth. There was a person who asked me where can I actually find the controller object. But in essence, it's just an empty. So you can generate, you can even delete this controller just like to create an empty as you wish. And it does not even need to be an empty. It can be anything, any mesh, plane, cube, circle, UV sphere, or even a curve is possible. So what you actually need is just uh, whatever object that has a transform data. That's the only thing that you need to care. So I'm going to put the fourth into fourth and select our sphere or select our empty. And I'm going to put that controller because if you try to use a transform information of an object to affect the node tree, you always need to go to the end panel and then in the node tree you need to use a trigger either for the object or collection and type in the location scale and the location ULA. There are lots of information about this um, in my channel talking about how to animate animation nodes. So you, I hope you can take a look to that so you, I don't need to repeat the old information that why I keep the always off and so on. So now there's nothing happens with our plate because I didn't type any information yet. But if I type uh, X, Y, Z, then instantaneously I get everything done already. So this is essentially how it works. And uh, basically this is already done. Uh, next thing is talking about how to actually how to actually rotate this entire ring. So what you can do here is you can take another transform matrix or you can use the offset matrix, still the same. So I put in offset matrices, but this time I'm going to change everything in the global axis and the global pivot. 
turn everything off and rotate on the axis then it start to rotate another thing just to remind you that this transform matrix as I explained earlier uh, can also be replaced with these offset matrices so let's delete this transform matrix if I don't have the transform matrix now everything is on the plane and that's why if I'm rotating on the axis it's rotating in such a way but if I want to use the offset matrices to replace the transform matrix then it just uh, stays at the global axis and the global pivot global pivot essentially means the world origin and in this case let's just rotate on Y for 90 degrees also one thing to be aware is that you cannot combine these two values together in the same offset matrix otherwise the axis to work on it will be very weird so you have to use at least the two nodes for such a function one is to rotate and the other is to flip and so on and then we have one more offset matrices and one more offset matrices to do various functions separately so sometimes it might be sound confusing and that's why sometimes even if you increase amount of nodes I, I may still prefer the transform matrix or matrix math node whichever way you wish and I think this is almost yet uh, one thing to mention there are many ways to make a procedural setup for the entire whole thing but I don't think I would like to discuss all of them um, since this is this turns this should be a rather simple tutorial just to mention if what if I would like to have a ring circular ring then you just take a spline from points and we need the points after it has been flipped vertically uh, which means I'm going to use the matrices after the second offset matrix matrices into points and the curve object output and increase the bevel depth so now we have a ring and this is very nice because everything is completely procedural then you can definitely model everything by hand except for the bridge animation but it won't be really procedural sometimes maybe you would like to change the scale or other things um, it will cause a lot of problem or whatever and this is almost it and for shader motion graphics is just uh, as straightforward as uh, in other tutorials in which you just take a object shader list you can plug the object controller for into that and we have object into that and within the material so let's go to the shader you just take a vertex color and in this case I'm probably just mix the shader because it's very very easy put the colors into the factor to determine the black and white or 0 to 1 and another is the emission shader so take a blue color and the red color and let's take a look with our actual plates and the bridge so this is uh, it uh, and uh, also one thing that I forgot to mention is in the actual animation I didn't actually use the empty but I used a UV sphere as a controller object so you just use the UV sphere and I put the sphere into controller collection and if the sphere is not large enough to affect all these plates then you just increase the offset and so on so I think this is almost really all about it um, you can play around with all these settings if you have any questions then comment below so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time bye bye